Today, we're going to talk about tasting wine. Now, I'm not talking about drinking wine. Drinking wine involves finding the bottle and refilling your glass as fast as possible. <laughs> tasting wine requires you to take a second and get to know what's in your glass. It's easy. This is how you do it. Now, first thing, make sure you have a glass that's big enough. Because when you're doing your swirl, which is step one, uh, you don't want the wine flying out all over the place. Also, two to three ounces. Like, I use like two ounces. That's, for me, a good amount of wine that you can swirl it around and, again, avoid decorating the people next to you at the table. So, step one is the swirl. How do you do it? Start with the glass on the table, your fingers at the base, and just swirl it around. Uh, when you get good at it, you'll be able to do this without it flying around. Why are we doing this? Oxygenating the wine. What that will do is it'll bring out all the aromas, the bouquet, all the flavor that's in the wine. Remember, you taste with your nose, not with your mouth. If you ever tried to eat or drink with a cold, you know that you're not going to get anything aromatic out of either. So, do the swirl. Number two, look at the color. Now, uh, this is largely aesthetic. A lot of people spend a lot of time talking about it. Um, I don't really care. If my red wine is not brown or my white wine isn't golden, uh, which can mean that the wine's oxidated, then I don't really care. The legs, that's just alcohol sliding down the side of the glass. And I've yet to see any correlation between quality and legs, but feel free to appreciate. Now, the most important step. The smell. Now this is where people freeze up. Ah! What does it smell like? Um, look for a fruit. Look for a spice. Look for a flower. Um, anything that is seems familiar. Um, a good way to start is just to have a wine, like a critic's comment about the wine, and just see if you can find the same things. What's going to happen is if you do this enough, is after a while you're going to start to see similar qualities between grapes. Uh, Sauvignon Blanc is going to have a herbal note. It's going to have uh, uh, citrus flavors. Uh, Syrah, Floral notes, violets, um, depending on where it's from, it's going to have either red or black fruits. Anyways, you'll start to get to know what's in your glass. Next step, the sip. Now, what you got to do, and you didn't see me do it, but because I don't want to look like a jerk, but what you're doing is you're just puckering your lips and you're sucking in a little bit of air. And what that does is allows the aromas to go up back through your nasal passage and you'll get even more out of your wine. Uh, anyways, feel free to spit or swallow. I don't really care about that kind of thing, depending on what you like to do. Now, I always go bad. Now, what, but the other thing I'm looking for, oh, yeah, I forgot that. When you taste your wine, what you're looking for, aside from that retronasal stuff, is tannin, acidity. If the wine, you find it too heavy, maybe it lacks acidity for you. Maybe you find it too thin, then perhaps there's uh, too much acidity. If it's really tannic, like in a tea that's been steeped for like 15 minutes with black tea, maybe that means that your red wine's young. And you'll see as you drink older wines that the tannins are going to be a little bit different. But it might just mean that your wine's not meant to be tasted by itself, but you need a piece of meat. Now, I always go back three, four, five times while I'm drinking. And, you know, I don't like to make a big statement about it. It's like, oh, I'm tasting wine. It's not that. A wine will evolve. It'll change. That's why the last glass is usually the best. So revisit your wine. Don't make a big statement about it. A wine wants to tell a story. Make sure that you're aware of what that story is. So spend the moment. Taste your wine.